Hello everyone and welcome back to Flashback Fridays and this will probably be the last video in this series for a little while. But today I'm very pleased to be taking a look back at the last figure in my episode 1 12 inch line of action figures from Hasbro and that is of course Anakin Skywalker. And this figure was released as part of the third wave of this initial run of Episode 1 tie-in figures. Now, Anakin might seem like a no-brainer, he is one of the main protagonists of the film, and of course the entire trilogy really revolves around Anakin Skywalker. However, this figure definitely would have presented some challenges for Hasbro, because of course he is a child in this film, and this would have been the first time they produced a childlike figure in this scale. And straight away when we look at the packaging, we can see of course that this is massively scaled down. This is in that much smaller box that we can see here that would typically be used to house R2-D2 or perhaps Yoda or the Jawas or, or some of the figures in that line. As you can see, they've tried to crouch him down into an action pose to help him accommodate the size of the packaging because of course he is slightly too tall for this box. But the branding and the design of the packaging is pretty much the same as we saw with the other fully fledged oblong 12 inch action figure cases that we've seen. We have this window display here of the Coruscant sort of styled window display which is uh, quite nice obviously it's much smaller much shorter here but it's pretty consistent with what we've seen with the other figures in the line. And when we flip the packaging over, we can see the other two figures that were released as part of this wave. We have R2A6, so this is essentially R2D2, but with green colouring and a chrome top. And we'll take a look at that a little bit later. And also these pit droids as well. And again, I'll come back to those pit droids a little bit later on, but they're somewhat of an unusual choice for this line. So taking a look at Anakin out of the packaging, I have to say he's actually a surprisingly pleasing figure. He's pretty consistent with the other figures in this line, and he actually benefits from some enhancements that the other figures didn't. Let's start off by taking a look at the head sculpt. Now I think this is actually a pretty successful sculpt all in all. It's quite nicely painted. There's actually a little bit of shading going on in the hair as well to give it a little bit more depth and texture. And I think this is actually a pretty strong likeness of Jake Lloyd, of course, who played Anakin Skywalker. I think one of the things this figure in particular benefits from is, as we know of course, this line was tend to be a little bit soft on the likenesses for the most part, with some notable exceptions. But I think here, because of course this actor is very very young, he doesn't have a lot of the extra detail and lines on his face as you get as you get older, this works very well with a softer likeness and so actually this looks a lot closer and a lot more accurate than some of the other releases. He does have a cloth costume of course, it is just one layer though, it is made of this sort of thick cotton which is quite pleasing to the touch and it looks pretty pretty screen accurate for the most part. However, you will notice that they have given this sort of tattooed effect underneath, which kind of just disappears into nothing around his neck here. Uh, this is supposed to obviously replicate another layer of clothing which he wears in the film. I think they've obviously thought in terms of cost, it would be cheaper to simply just paint this on rather than actually investing in an extra layer of clothing to sew into place. He does have this belt though, which is quite nicely sculpted. It's made of rubber and straps into place through a loop at the back of the belt. And like everything else in this figure, it is a completely unique piece. As we can see with the hands, these would only ever be used on this figure. They could not be reused on any other figures in this line, or at least none that I'm aware of. So, of course, all of these pieces are uniquely sculpted. It's a completely different mould for this figure, and this makes it a little bit interesting and a little bit different to anything else that we have in the collection, which is always fun when you have a pretty large collection of action figures in any line. And this even extends to the boots, and I have to say, I really applaud the effort they've made with the boots, and I wish they'd taken this approach with the other figures in this line over all the years, because these are made of a solid plastic, which makes them a lot sturdier, it makes them look a lot more robust, and of course, helps them stand freely on their own without the need of a stand. As we know, the other figures in this line tended to rely on rubber boots, which definitely had some challenges when it comes to posing and display. But these look really good, they look very textured, there's a lot of detail on here, and a number of different paint apps, which make them look really authentic and quite worn and textured, which is fantastic stuff. For articulation, he does have that straight swivel at the head, at the neck there, as we would anticipate, so his head can spin all the way around. He's got ball joints in the shoulders, so those arms do kick up and out at a really healthy distance, and of course they'll rotate around as well. There is a single joint at the elbow, allowing that lower arm to bend to 90 degrees, and there is another pin swivel at the wrist there that allows that hand to rotate all the way around 360 degrees and hinge forwards and backwards a little bit as well. Now there is a straight swivel at 
at the waist, there is no ball joint here, so he can turn from side to side. He's also got a hinge at the hips there, so the legs will kick out to the side, they'll kick forwards, and there is a single joint at the knee that allows that lower leg to bend to 90 degrees. He's not the most articulated figure in the line, but his articulation is by no means bad. You can get everything you want from this. And the one thing I would say is that there are no rubber parts in any of his joints. So these are all solid plastic pieces that will pose any way you want them to, which is fantastic. Now, he doesn't come with any accessories, not even that backpack we see in the film, which is a little bit disappointing, to be honest, because I think this is a character that could have come with a number of different interesting pieces, just to make him a little bit more visually interesting. But nevertheless, I think what we've got here is a pretty good figure. I don't know whether this was a big seller, and I'm not entirely sure how people felt about this character, particularly children, who would have been the main audience for this line. Certainly, Anakin would not have the same cachet as Obi-Wan. Kenobi, Darth Maul, and Qui-Gon Jinn, which all came in the first two waves of this line. But as I said, he's a really important character in the film, so he probably would have shifted some decent units all in all. But in his own rights, this is an absolutely fine figure. It's not the most exciting figure in the line, but it is an interesting one to add to your collection. Before I leave you today, though, I did want to touch on the other figures in this line that I haven't covered so far. So in that second wave, we did also get a 12-inch scale Watto figure. I used to own this. I actually got rid of it a few years ago. Uh, it wasn't a fantastic figure. It was all solid plastic. <laughs> it was roughly about mm, seven, eight inches tall, maybe a little bit taller than that, perhaps nine inches tall. Certainly wasn't 12 inches tall. <laughs> and um, it was, as I said, quite limited. It had straight swivels at the shoulders and at the hips. Uh, it had a swivel at the neck. And of course, he had these ball joints for his wings, which were probably the most exciting thing about this figure that allowed the wings to be posed in different positions. He did come with a plastic data pad and uh, and that was it um, so not really the most exciting figure in the line a pretty unusual choice to add up to this lineup to be honest uh, i'm not sure how popular this figure or character indeed might have been uh, amongst uh, the, the toy buying audience uh, and as i said a little bit disappointing as an entry in this line anyway in a similar vein, we also had the pit droids, which of course were scaled down figures, but they weren't really too scale. So these were probably a, a similar scale to Anakin Skywalker, probably just as tall as him, but obviously in the film they would have been much smaller. So they're out of scale really in terms of the universe and what we see on screen. Uh, you did get two though, which is quite nice. So you got different paint apps on essentially the same sculpt, the same figure, uh, which made them a little bit interesting. It was nice to kind of army build for lack of a better term. <laughs> uh, and, and these are quite nicely made. They're very similar to the battle droid in the sense that they, of course, were completely unique pieces uh, and they had a similar kind of articulation scheme, straight swivels, but with some interesting joints here and there. So these were quite nice figures in their own right, actually, but they weren't the most exciting characters to add to this lineup. I appreciate, of course, Hasbro were trying to appeal to the child audience by doing a lot of interesting new aliens and droids and different things that were just a little bit exciting because, of course, we all know that that was what the Star Wars universe is is really famous for, but I don't think that these were the ones that really could, really spoke to children as being the most playable, the most fun action figures you can have. They also produced this R2A6 droid figure. As you can see, this is simply a repainted R2D2 that we saw from the Kenner years, and I've done a video on this figure in the past. Uh, this is a really nice figure, actually, so worthy of a, of a repaint. I'm not quite sure this is the character that people would have wanted or kids would have particularly wanted. I think they might have been better just re-releasing R2D2, to be honest. Uh, but here he is in green rather than blue. But the one thing that is quite interesting about this figure, and I do really like, is they do give him the chrome-plated dome, which is a really nice touch. I wish they'd done this for R2-D2. Now, whilst they're releasing strange oddity characters like this, they missed one major character, which of course is Padme Amidala. And it's interesting that she wasn't included in the main central waves, because of course this is a really important character and an action-oriented character as well that would have suited this line very well, drawing on previous experience from their Princess Leia figures. However, they did dedicate a whole subline to Amidala in her various different outfits. Uh, this was much more doll-like. Clearly, this was aimed at little girls. This was a different kind of market they were going for, and they were trying to replicate the sort of Barbie approach to this character. Because it had things to play with her hair and change her outfits and do things like that. That said, they would release a special two-pack, though, that included Qui-Gon Jinn and, of course, Padme in her sort of action role towards the end of the film, which I really like this costume. This is the figure I think they should have released as part of the main wave, and this would have been really, really fun and cool. But the episode one 
line wouldn't end there. It did continue in the 12 inch scale for a little bit longer after this and they released some special electronic figures. Uh, they had a, an open mouth yelling Qui-Gon Jinn for example uh, with a light up lightsaber I think which is uh, pretty cool. It had some electronic sounds which is uh, pretty interesting but we also got some other cool character releases as well including uh, TC-14 which is essentially a repainted C-3PO which I've already covered in another video. I really like that figure. I love the chrome paint. They did the same thing here. Gave him a couple of accessories and added some sound effects as well which makes this a pretty interesting addition to the line. They also included a Boss Nass figure which is very cool, very welcome, a very important alien uh, and a pretty memorable character from this film so that is a really cool addition. But then they also released Sebulba which uh, from what I can tell in photos doesn't look like the most exciting figure in the world. It's fairly imposable. I think it has a couple of swivels at his uh, arm joints and uh, maybe his head and that's about it. It's um, a pretty strange character's release. I know he's important but without his uh, his pod racer um, yeah it does, it's not really tailor-made for action figures I don't think. <laughs> um, so all things considered a pretty fun line. There's actually quite a lot of different figures and characters in this line that makes it interesting and diverse and a pretty fun toy line to collect and build. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and remember to subscribe as there'll be plenty more videos soon.